fulfillment of, of prophecy. Thanks given key to fulfillment of prophecy. And in our Sunday services, we have been looking at understanding the power of thanksgiving. Understanding the power of thanksgiving. Understanding remains the key to actualizing the blessings of God upon our lives. What you don't understand, you can't take the blessing. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Good understanding giveth favor. The way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding. You may have a weapon in your hand, but if you don't understand what it carries, you can still be subdued with that weapon. Praise the name of the Lord. Understanding the power that the key that you have in your hands carry puts you on top. Thanksgiving is one major scriptural tool to actualize the fulfillment of prophecy. What is thanksgiving, therefore? Thanksgiving is giving glory to God for his mighty deeds in our lives. Giving glory to God. Man is tempted to take God's glory either directly or indirectly. So we must understand that every good act in our lives Principally, God does it so that we can give him the glory. So that we can give him his glory. His glory he will not share with anybody. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26, he says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty men, not many noble men are called. But, verse 27, For God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to confirm the things which are mighty. Why? Verse 28, And the best things of the world are the things which are despised. That's what God has chosen. And things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Ultimately, for one purpose, that no flesh should glory in his presence. God wants the glory. So that's why God has chosen you and me, powerless, without the required wisdom, unqualified, because God wants the glory. God will not choose anybody. God will not do any great things in the life of anybody who will say it is me because God wants the glory. So God will choose only those who he is sure will come back and say, it is you that is worthy. You that is worthy. You that is worthy of my praise. That's the person God is looking for. So he looks for foolish people like me and you. He looks for unwise people. He wouldn't choose the intellects, intellectuals, who will speak plenty grammar. And say, can't you see what that does? I mean, I mean, I have this brain, man. I'm just hot. Praise the name of the Lord. God won't choose those people because he wants the glory. That no flesh should glory himself. Thanksgiving, therefore, is giving God the glory because God wants the glory. So anytime God does anything in your life and you return back to give him the glory, he wants more glory. So he makes better things to happen in your life. God is not looking for the strong. No. So he's looking for those who will turn back to him. In appreciation. So anytime God sees somebody, one who we always return to give him back the glory, that's the person he keeps doing great things in his life because he's sure of taking the glory. So thanksgiving is giving God the glory for the mighty deeds in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. What is thanksgiving? 
thanksgiving is an attitude of gratitude or appreciation to God. An attitude of gratitude and appreciation to God. So when we talk about thanksgiving, it's not what you should do. Only when something has happened in your life. It, you must cultivate it as a lifestyle. It's an attitude. So thanksgiving is an attitude. Something that must become part and parcel of our lives. Some people don't smile until uh, somebody blesses them. Some people can't see any good thing God has done until one strange financial breakthrough happens. That you slept and woke up is not by your power. Praise the name of the Lord. You go to work and come back, it's not by your power. Right on that same road you passed, there were people that were accidented. Either they were inside vehicle, inside keke. Some are even standing by the road. They were not riding anything. And accident came and met them where they are. Praise the name of the Lord. That you have food to eat, even if there is no meat on top. Thank him. Thank him. Some people have food, but they can't eat. They have all the money, but they can't eat. Remember those days when we were in primary school? You know the kind of prayer they teach you how to pray when you want to eat. It's a song. Eh? Some have food, but they not eat. Some can eat, but have no food. I have food, and I can eat. Glory be. To God on high. Didn't you sing it? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. It's as simple as that. You see, people don't appreciate the deep things of God. We just look and quantify some specific things as blessing. You don't think round. If you know how to think, you will know how to thank God. Praise the name of the Lord. You will know how to thank God. You know how to thank God just because you have not yet gotten married. You want to kill God. Praise the name of the Lord. Your prayer now is more of a violent accusation against God. Oh God! I am 43 years now. If you are not sure, go and look at my birth certificate. All my friends have gotten married. Abby, can't you see them? And I'm here. Abi, will you say you don't know? I'm just saying it now before I backslide. Praise the name of the Lord. That you can be even thinking, that your brain can be sound enough to be thinking of marriage. Won't you thank God? There are some people that are more beautiful and more handsome than you on the street. They even dress well. The one knot is off there. And they're on the street, they look at you. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So to even be sound, to be thinking of marriage, and then some people even came to approach you. You didn't like them. You are accusing God. Oh God, is that the kind of people you are bringing to me? That they approach you. Won't you go into the room and say, Lord, that they even spoke to me, I thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. She see the one that came. Is that the one I'm looking for? That I say I'm looking for a husband does not mean anybody. Oh God, see that one. That's the one who want to who say he want to marry. Who will marry that one? That's why another person is not coming. Go back and thank God. Praise the name of the Lord. So, what am I saying? Thanksgiving must be our attitude. Must be our lifestyle. I've watched our leaders. The few times I've been privileged to be around them. 
Each time you keep hearing, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And for everything you can, for everything, they are sitting down. Oh, Lord, thank you for today. Lord, you are good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They say it many times. It has become part and parcel of them. Some people don't have thank you in their mouth. Is somebody who can't thank God, is this the same person who will thank man? Everything is complain, 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 complain. You woke up, they say, how are you? How was the night? Bad. So how far your walk? Uh, we are just there. We are just there. What of your wife? In fact, problematic. What of your children? Mm -hmm. Coconut head. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. They don't see any good thing at all to thank God for. That's why you can't see any good thing coming in. Thanksgiving must be an attitude. Make it an attitude. So don't let it stop with this month. Let it be your lifestyle. For everything, the Bible says, give thanks. For everything, give thanks. For everything, give thanks. For everything, give thanks. For everything, give thanks. That when it is your attitude, you just keep changing levels. Supernaturally. Supernaturally. Hallelujah. Because an attitude of gratitude is what enhances your altitude in life. It enhances your altitude in life without struggles, without strength. But you just see yourself moving, moving supernaturally because there is power in thanksgiving. There is power in thanksgiving. Even in the ordinary life, if you have a child that each time comes to you and thank you, or you have somebody around, each time appreciate everything. Oh, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You are naturally inclined and drawn toward that person. Praise the name of the Lord. You are drawn and inclined towards that person. It's an attitude. It must be developed as an attitude. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is how to get God permanently on your side all the time. Look at this commission for instance. This is one of our strong tools. That's why God is always at work. Because he knows we will give him all the glory for anything. Even the things people consider foolish, we give him the glory for everything. For everything. For everything. Shiloh has come and gone, but we are still thanking God massively. We are thanking him. That's why we have never had a better last year. From the onset of this commission, Thanksgiving has been a major, major tool. Even when there seems to be nothing plain physical, physical. Thanking God. God, someone will lead a time of Thanksgiving and praise. People will sing and that. Even when there was nothing. Even when the church was on light light. And we'll be singing and dancing with dust. We are thanking God. So it is an attitude that guarantees continuous change of level. That's why no devil can stop this commission. Because we have the secret. Praise the name of the Lord. Every month you see the way we thank God. We dance every last Sunday and all that. And then we bless the children. And then the children keep multiplying. Dedication, child dedication. 20, 30 and all that. Every month. That's why God keeps multiplying. Us on every side. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Make it an attitude. And God will not stop changing your level. Praise the name of the Lord. For instance, this commission. All through this year, can't, we, can't you see the mighty acts of God? Look at the amazing supernatural supply. This commission is a commission that does not believe in borrowing or begging. And yet, God keeps help, opening his heavens. Things are just getting done with ease. Amazing supplies. Hallelujah. 
both material and financial resources in any form. God doing his own work, accomplishing his own purpose because the heavens are open. Thanksgiving is what opens up the heaven. It opens up the heaven. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Did I hear your loud amen? amen. Did I hear your loud amen? amen? Did I hear your loud amen? amen? Why are we thanking God? As a commission. For the constant release of his word. For the constant release of his word. Every prophetic word that have impacted on people, liberated people from the chains of the enemy has always been by his word. He sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all the oppression of the devil. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word. It is that word that has brought diverse transformation. Most of the testimonies you hear on this altar. And as the word came, I took it. And then, here is the testimony. God always giving the word. God always giving the word. He sent his word. And the word healed them. He sent his word and the word transformed them. It is the word that God sent that returned back with testimony. He sent his word. God is always giving his word. And God's word is quick and powerful. And his word is new every morning. Each time you come to church, there is always one word that the Holy Ghost drops in your heart, which is your own word. That is not man's word. That is his word. Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 37. Who is he that saith and it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not? So every word that produced results in testimony has been the word that God gave and sent. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So for that, we are grateful to him as a church, as a commission. We are eternally grateful to him. This is a commission that is is, is that has its foundation on God's word. Everything by God's word. We teach people how to take their testimonies from God's word. Hallelujah. So you don't need to be squeezed before you, you no. God's word is enough. God's word is enough. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be made whole. God's word is enough. And it has been producing signs and wonders in the lives of people. And that's why we are thanking him as a church and as a commission. Why are we thanking him? For answer prayers. For answer prayer. We understand that we can only pray. But it's only God. It takes God to answer. So all the glory must go to the prayer answering God. Prayer answering God, you are worthy of prayer. Prayer answering God, we deserve our praise. He's the prayer answering God. Ours is to pray. And the answer comes from Him. And God has proved Himself as God here. Diverse testimonies. Diverse testimonies. Diverse testimonies in all our play, prayer platform. Testimonies of the act of God. Covenant of prayer. Testimonies. Mountain of prayer. Testimonies. Testimony. People go to their homes, sir. Go there with prayer points and testimonies. To him be all the glory. Hallelujah. Can I hear your loud amen? amen. Can I hear your loud amen? amen? In Psalm 65 and verse 5. By terrible things in righteousness... Will thou answer us, O God of salvation, who at the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far off upon the sea? Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call on me, and I will answer, and I will show you great and mighty things 
which thou knowest not. That has been our testimony. Hallelujah. Therefore, to multiply all these testimonies in our lives, we must imbibe the attitude of thanksgiving. 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 If anyone have said a word and it has come to pass, it is because God commanded it. Apostles, prophets, pastors are just mere microphones in the house of God. If they said anything and it came to pass, it is the God in them. And that's why the glory must go to him. Hallelujah. All the glory must be to him, not man. To, con to enjoy this continuous blessing, we must make thanksgiving a continuous thing. If God can hear our thanksgiving, the blessings will multiply. Malachi chapter 2 and verses 1 to 3. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, if you will not lay to heart, to give glory unto my name, see as the Lord, I will even send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have caused them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Hallelujah. But that shall not be our own portion in the name of Jesus. I say that shall not be our own portion in the name of Jesus. So thanksgiving is that one major scriptural principle that guarantees continuous blessings. That guarantees continuous blessings. In John chapter 6 and verse 6 to 12, you know the story? 5,000 people were there in the wilderness and then they needed to eat because they were fainting. And then Jesus told his disciples, let them sit down. And then, disciples were wondering, what does he want to do? Where do we get these things? Food? Or the money, enough money to feed these people? They were almost there, as if they were stranded. Jesus said, no, 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 let them sit down. Thanksgivers are never stranded in life. Thanksgivers, they were in the midst of the wilderness. There was no place to buy food. Even if you want to buy the food, how much? You will need a lot, more, a lot of money. All these limitations were there. But ultimately, he knew what to do. The Bible said Jesus himself knew what to do. Thanksgivers are never stranded in life. Thanksgivers are never stranded in life. If you will make your lifestyle a lifestyle of thanksgiving, no matter the limitations around, you will never be stranded. There will always be what to do. He will always show you what to do. So any time you get to a point where you seem not even to know what to do, just give him thanks. Just give him thanks instead of complaining. Just give him thanks. And then he will make a way out. Praise the name of the Lord. You also remember in John chapter 11 verses 41 to 44. Concerning Lazarus' case, Jesus got there. Everything was looking close, but he gave thanks. And then Lazarus came back to life. Praise the name of the Lord. Thanksgivers are never stranded. He took the five loaves and two fishes and blessed it. So, it was given. Nothing is ever enough in life until God touches it. Nothing. No matter what you have, it will never be enough until the hand of God is upon it. Until God touches it. And no matter how few that thing may be, once the hand of God touches it, it will keep multiplying. I'd like you to see that as we begin to close this year. Sit down and begin to itemize every expenses that you can remember has been made by you this year. And put side by side whatever your income that you, understand, you know is. You will discover, you will, you will be so shocked. How come 
Where did this money come from? This is my salary. How come? How come? Praise the name of the Lord. How come? How have I been able to do all these things? This cannot be me. Nothing is enough until God touches it. So, it must be our greatest desire for God's hand to come over whatever we have. And thanksgiving is what brings God, God's hand, into anything you are doing. So you can be selling water and prosper. You can be selling granite and prosper. You can be selling anything. Once God's hand is there, once God's hand is there, many years ago, one of our members, those days in Kaduna Church, looks as if nothing was there to, to do. Started this Akara business. You know, with 10,000. Started and started. Like joke. She started and was doing it. After some time, it was not only Akara. She joined it with yam. Fried yam. Akara. After some time, plantain. And then, before you know, it was turning to a joint. Before you know, she bought freezer and put salt ring there. So you come, you make your order in whatever combination. And then you sit there, they give you soft drink. Now, before you know, she started having branches. Before you know, she bought a bus. Before you know, she built a house. Before you know, she had a supermarket. When God's hand is upon a thing, it keeps multiplying. And thanksgiving is what brings God's hand into anything in life. Praise the name of the Lord. And at the end of the day, the Bible says, everybody ate. And then they got that 12 baskets. It was more than enough. It was over and above. That is what Thanksgiving does. Thanksgiving takes you to the realm of over and above. It takes you to the realm of over and above. Over and above. Something that was not going to be enough. Here is it now. It became much more than enough. They gathered the fragments over and above unto them that had eaten. That's what Thanksgiving does. It takes you to the realm of over and above. Over and above. Over and above. Over and above. Hallelujah. Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus. Case closed, humanly speaking, as he gave thanks, the Bible says, Lazarus came back to life. Nothing ever dies in the presence of thanksgiving. Nothing ever dies in the presence of thanksgiving. Nothing ever dies in the presence of thanksgiving. No, you can't be a thanksgiver and be going down. You can't be a thanksgiver and your business die. You can't be a thanksgiver and your career die. Nothing dies with thanksgiving. No matter the situation. Hallelujah. No matter the situation, thanksgiving, therefore, is a weapon that keeps God walking on your side all the time. God is against ingrates. Nothing angers God. Nothing annoys God much more than taking his blessings for granted. God reacts. In Malachi chapter 2, he said, I will cause your blessing. I will cause. This commandment is for you. It's not an instruction. It's not an admonition. It's a commandment. This commandment is for you. If you will not lay it in heart to give me glory, the glory that is due to me, I will send a curse. That's not a palatable statement. God is angry with ingrates. The cheapest way to provoke God's anger is when you refuse to give him back his glory. In Psalm 78, if you read verses 10 downwards, they took God for granted. They kept not the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law. And how? They forgot his works and his wonders that he has shown them, they forgot. Marvelous things that he did in the sight of their father, they took it for granted. And they provoke God to anger. Look at verse 40. 
Verse 40. They provoke God to anger. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness? And grieve him in the desert. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. God's anger came upon them. They remember not his hands, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Some people, the moment they have only one challenge, they forget the numerous testimonies of God in their lives. And they begin to accuse God. Praise the name of the Lord. They get God. They provoke God's anger. You will not provoke God's anger. Praise the name of the Lord. In Psalm 28 and verse 5, the Bible says, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the oppression of his hand, he shall destroy them and not build them all. Because they regard not the works of the Lord. They regard not the works of the Lord. See, I've been asking for a job. Since the year began, up to now, nothing. And then somebody said, ah, but what of this job you are doing? He said, which one? <laughs> the one they are paying me 10,000 per month. That one a job. I beg, make we talk another thing. God said, okay, no problem. No problem. Praise the name of the Lord. They regard not the work of the Lord. They took God for granted. Took God for granted. Took God for granted. Took God's blessings for granted and commonized it. Just like the children of Israel in the wilderness and say, well, what is this? That's the meaning of manna. What is this? Giving us manna. What, what is this? What is this? What is this? God said, okay, no problem. That is it. That is it. After working, you collected your salary and then you put it on this thing and you, you shake your head. Is this how man is going to be going? Yeah. And I say, I'm serving God. You go and serve the devil now. To see whether it's better. And then they forgot the works of the Lord. And all through that month, he never visited any hospital. All through that month, his strength was preserved. And he looked at God and said, what is this? What is this? Maybe when that person is in the hospital and they tie his two legs and they put pipe in his nose, then they will bring one million before you and say, see money, oh. see money. That's when you will appreciate God. Praise the name of the Lord. That will not be your worship. Can I hear you say, Lord, I thank you. Come on, shout it. Lord, I thank you. Say, Lord, I'm grateful. It's the name of the Lord. Maybe you had vehicle before, but certain situation made you, you know, to, to, to sell the vehicle or something like that. And now, you are trekking, still believing God. And each time you are trekking, you are, it's more or less insulting God. You see? You see? Can somebody like me be trekking? And God is watching. God is watching. And anytime they announce any program in church is a problem for you. So we'll be meeting on uh, Monday for another time of prayers. Uh, you never do. They no no say how now so good they trek up. The things in everybody get cut like them. I know go come if you shout more than that, I know go come. Praise the name of the Lord. And God is hearing. Until you thank him for where you are, the next level is not guaranteed. Don't provoke God to anger. As we are winding up this year, please begin to take your mind back to the goodness of God in your life. And begin to document it. Begin to document it. Begin to document it. A whole five years, in fact, the whole income that somebody has saved for his lifetime can be cleared by one sickness. Just one. So you don't know what you have if you have sound health. That's why you are still complaining. You don't know what you have. Did you not hear that health is wealth? Praise the name of the Lord. What are the obstacles, enemies of thanksgiving? Let me show you quickly before we round up. So that you can be aware 
and be careful so that the devil does not use it to stop the favor of God in your life. Enemies of Thanksgiving, number one, haste. Haste. Some people are too, too much in a hurry. That's why they can't see what God is doing in their life. Haste. Haste. They just want to arrive there quickly. They want to get this quickly. So they feel God is too slow. Haste. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. He that believeth shall not make haste. He that believeth shall not make haste. Hagwakuk chapter 2 and verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. At the end it shall speak. And not lie, though it tarries, wait for it. Hallelujah. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Wait for it. Even though it looks as if it's tarry. Wait for it. There is an appointed time for every event on earth. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering towards us. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. God is not slack. God is not slack. God is not slack. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Be not slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promises. Too many people are too much in the earth. We are living in a world of fast break. Everything fast, fast. Fast, fast. Fast, fast. People want to get there now, 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 now. That's what has led so many people to all manners of perdition, all manners of evil. He has just graduated. You can see some young riding all manners of car. He wants to get there now, 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 now. Now, now, now. And then they now get into all manners of issues, problems. Get into courts. Get into all manners of groups and then bad companies. Rituals enter into all manners of, 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 of you know of frauds and all that because he wants to get it now now God is too slow God is too slow it has to be now and so he can't see even the one God has done please beware beware of unnecessary ungodly haste ungodly haste ungodly haste Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Praise the name of the Lord. Men are in sizes. Some people you see with all manners of things, you don't know what they do. You don't know what they do. And even the ones that have it rightly, you don't know how many years it took them. So don't kill yourself unnecessarily. Number two enemy is offense. So some people are already offended, so they can't see the goodness of God. They can't thank Him. John the Baptist was offended. Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. That was the man who eroded the coming of Jesus. Spoke so well of Jesus. Now, a little challenge. He was offended. For him, God is too slow. That's how some people are. They have professed all manners of things about God confidently and all that. And now when they see one little challenge, they feel God is too slow. John the Baptist sent his disciples, go and ask him, is he really the one that I say should come? Or do we expect another person? You know what he meant to say? If he is the one by now, I shouldn't be here. He's too slow. So it is either he has lost his power or he doesn't have the power. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why you have some people say, ah, but if God can do this thing, why has he not done it? Why has he not done it? Offense. They are offended. Offended in their hearts. They are offended. Even when they come to a church. They say, let's, let's give God thanks. They say, for what? 
Everybody, let's sing and dance. Come and dance me now. Come, 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 come and sing. They look at people who are dancing and see if these ones are not. Who know whether this one don't shout something this morning? Praise the name of God. They don't see the reason why you should just be, be thanking God that way. They are offended. Beware of offense. Beware of offense. Maybe you have lost something before. And then you are so offended. Ah, if God was alive, why did this thing happen to me? Why? I'm just coming from church. Oh, coming from church and they collected my car. From church. And God was watching. It is God I went to serve. And then he allowed them to collect my car. And you say I should be dancing. I no go dance. Praise the name of the Lord. Offended in God. Maybe they have lost one, a loved one. And they feel that. Why, where, why, where was God if he was actually God? And they are offended. So every other thing good in their life they can see. They wear of offense. They lost a precious job. People conspired against them. They even came with their name to church. They anointed the name. They tied man to and at the end of the day. They still lost the job. They can't forgive God since that time. They can't forgive God. What is it they wanted me to do that I didn't do? In fact, pastor even prayed for me. They still sacked me. Praise the name of the Lord. And since that day, they are offended. Their heart is full of bitterness. Be careful. That satanic device to cut away your blessings from God. Hallelujah. And number three, as a roundup, comparison. Beware of comparison. Beware of comparison. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Beware of comparison. Beware of comparison. He said, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. For they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Everybody has his own destiny track. Stop comparing yourself with others. Stop comparing yourself with others. Everybody has his own destiny track. Face your own destiny track. Oh, we are classmates. See now, he has three houses. Up to now, and you know this and this. I have to do some. I have to do something. Heaven help those who help themselves. Where did you read it in the Bible? Heaven help those who are helpless. Praise the name of the Lord. Be careful. Oh, we got married the same day. We got married the same day. See them now. They have three cars. We we are still there. Even keke. Stop comparing yourself with others. They who compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. When God told Noah, let all species of the animals get to the ark. And then everybody was moving to the ark. The lions were there, hippotamus and all manners of fast leopards were there. I'm sure just at the twinkling of the ark, they were there inside the ark. But the snail was there. I may not be able to run like them, but I will get there. And everyone who has gotten there does not mean that they have to shut the ark. And they say, no problem, welcome, sit down, make one sit down. Say, who will they wait for? Now, brother snail. And at the end of the day, he still got there. Praise the name of the Lord. You may not get there at their own pace. But the good news is that you will get there. Yeah. Just focus on God. Be grateful to God for where you are. You will get to where he has programmed for you. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I am grateful God. Thank you Jesus. Quickly we are going to soon rise up and sing praises to God. To demonstrate our heart of appreciation. But before we do that, somebody's here, you are not born again. You have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Give me this opportunity. I will pray with you. And Jesus will come into your life. You will be born again.